Stethoscope is not just a diagnostic tool. It is the symbol of healthcare professionals. But what if I tell you that most of the physicians cannot use stethoscope properly? Yes, according to a CNN report, more than 80% physicians cannot recognize the common heart problems by using an ordinary stethoscope. Now, this is not the problem that we can ignore because auscultation is the first line of diagnosis in each system of medicine. And especially in Eastern medicine, it is known as the medical ritual because this art encompasses the compassion between physician and the patient. Let's explore the history of auscultation. Although the stethoscope was invented by Lenick in 19th century, but the history of auscultation is far dated back to the ancient times. Hippocrates, who is also known as the father of medicine, was the first person who introduced the method of listening to the patient's heartbeat and breathing sounds by putting ears on the patient's chest. And he names this technique as the direct auscultation. Later on, Galen contributed to the cardiopulmonary assessment art by describing the presence of blood in arteries rather than pneuma as per the ancient concept. In the 10th century, a Muslim physician, Hale Abbas, described the difference between arteries and veins based on their thickness. Almost 40 years later, another great name in the history of medicine, Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna, who was not just pioneer in the pulsology but also differentiated the contraction of atria and ventricles. In the 13th century, Ibn Nafis was the first physician who discovered pulmonary circulation even 400 years before William Harvey. And in this timeline, how we can forget one of the great physicians of 20th century, Shaheed Hakim Muhammad Said, who teach us that the most important part of stethoscope is the part between two earpieces, which is the physician's brain. According to a Dawn newspaper report, he examined more than 5 million patients in his lifetime and this is a national record on its own. A physician with such a profound experience didn't underestimate the importance of auscultation. In his book, tajrabat e tabib he described at many places the auscultatory findings of his patients. For instance, in a case of mitral stenosis, he delineated and I quote, Zavye kalb ki thokar kadre niche aur pheli hui hai. Means, the apex beat of the patient is displayed which indicates the cardiomegaly. Moreover, he wrote that Zavye kalb ki thokar ke makam par aur usse kadre upar kuch fasle par halki si phadak nazar aati hai. Here he was referring to the palpable murmurs also known as thrills which if present at the site of apex beat is the characteristic feature of mitral stenosis. He added that kalp ki awazen tez aur choti hain means the accentuation of cardiac sounds due to overfilling of ventricles as a result of cardiomegaly. Furthermore, he added that kalp ki kaide par dusri awaz numaya taur par zordar, vazia aur dohri sunai deti hai. Here he was explaining that the aortic and pulmonary components of second heart sound are not synchronized and if this occurs during expiration, it indicates hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now surely every physician can appreciate the way Shaheed Hakim Muhammad Said described the auscultatory findings of his patient in just three lines. This inspired me to initiate the project CPAT to reincorporate the decaying art of auscultation in our young physicians. And for that purpose, I followed the multiple encoding theory to make the videos of cardiopulmonary sounds in such a scientific way that students can easily memorize the cardiac and pulmonary sounds in just one minute by watching, reading and listening to these videos. As the multiple encoding theory suggests that the more we use encoding techniques to learn something, the more it remained in our brain as a long-term memory. So in this project, 
I used all the encoding techniques so that student can easily learn the cardiopulmonary sounds with the help of these videos. For acoustic encoding, the patient heart and lung sounds were recorded by using the electric stethoscope and then developed the two versions of these sounds, one with 10% loudness in volume and another with 10% slower in speed by using Audacity software. This will create a phonological loop in students' minds so that they will not just understand the complex sounds but can memorize them easily. For visual encoding, the phonocardiogram and spectrogram of the sounds were displayed in the video in real-time correlation with the audios by using waveform software so that the learner can better understand the sound waves and memorize them. For semantic encoding, the key features of the sounds with chunking and mnemonics are elaborated so that deep processing and optimal retrieval of knowledge can occur whenever it required by the student during an exam or during their clinical practice. At last but not least, for elaborative encoding, the literature of each sound in a video are expounded in such a broadness that after watching a one minute video, student will know about the name, characteristics, related pathologies, maneuvers, sight of a particular sound and the part of stethoscope that should be used to listen that sound. In the same pattern, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I successfully developed the world's second largest database of cardiopulmonary sounds that comprised 28 cardiac sounds in five playlists, correspond to the anatomical areas on the chest for specific cardiac sounds, such as in playlist of aortic area, the sounds of aortic regurgitation, aortic stenosis, aortic insufficiency, partition of aorta, bicuspid aortic valve, and sound of prosthetic aortic valve can be heard. While in the playlist of pulmonic area, the sound of pulmonary stenosis, S2 split, atrial septal defect, patent ductus arteriosus, and heart sound in right bundle block can be heard. And in the playlist of herbs area, the heart sound of pericarditis and infective endocarditis can be heard. In the playlist of tricuspid area, the normal heart sound with S1 split, tricuspid and mitral regurgitation, systolic murmur, sound in tetralogy of fallot, and cardiac sound in ventricle septal defect can be heard. While in the playlist of mitral area, the mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation, third heart sound, fourth heart sound, cardiac sound in congestive heart failure, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and in myocardiomyopathy can be heard. And all the 17 pulmonary sounds such as crackles, wheezings, striders, ronchi, leak squeak, and death rattles are placed in one playlist to make it easy for the students. Recently, I have also updated this playlist with the lung sound in COVID-19. Factually, this database has no comparison with other databases out there because it is the only database of its kind that is based on the encoding theory to elaborate auscultatory findings in a very scientific way. This database is available online free of cost for every learner. And also, I am working on Nafis 01, which is a medical simulator that can be used in classrooms and teaching hospitals to teach young physicians the art of auscultation. I'm also planning to give live training sessions all over the Pakistan and short training courses to revive this decaying art of disease diagnosis. My future plan regarding this project is to develop Pakistan's first acoustic lab at Hamdard University, Karachi, where we will introduce the sounds of atrial brutes and venous humps for the first time and this will inshallah further expand this database that will eventually make it the world's largest database of its kind and that will be a humble tribute to the legendary physician Shaheed Hakim Muhammad Said. At last I would like to share that this project Alhamdulillah has won Pakistan's three largest medical research competitions such as 5th All Pakistan Dies USA organized by Dow University of Health Sciences, National Project Competition organized by Daud University of Engineering and Technology and Hamdard University Project Exhibition Competition held in Expo Karachi. 
To listen the auscultatory sounds, you can click on the links given in the description of this video. And don't forget to share it with others too, so that we all can learn together the language of broken hearts and ailing lungs. For further inquiries, you can contact me via my email address. We will meet soon inshallah with an exciting news regarding this project. Till then, Allah Hafiz. One of the great challenges in this world is knowing enough about a subject to think you're right, but not enough about the subject to know you're wrong.